What's up everybody, my name is Caleb and I'm a fitness coach and the author of The Truth About Fitness. Now if you're watching this video, you've either stumbled across it on my YouTube channel or you're just beginning week one of my guide, The Truth About Fitness. Either way, thanks for checking in and I hope this video helps. Now, as the title promises, I'm gonna be covering how to count your macros. If you're not familiar, you're probably asking yourself, what's a macro and how do I count it? Macros is short for macronutrients. They're simply what make up calories. So you have calories at the top and you have macronutrients underneath. They're not separate things, macronutrients just make up calories. So for your macronutrients, you have protein, carbs, and fat. For every one gram of protein, there's four calories. For every gram of carbs, there's four calories. And for every gram of fat, there's nine calories. So counting your macros is essentially just counting your calories, just a little bit more strategic and effective. In my humble opinion, this is a very intelligent way to approach your diet. It's designed so that you can still eat the foods that you want to eat while still hitting your goals. And it's pretty simple to do. Now my recommendation as a fitness coach is that you get most of your food from clean and wholesome sources, such as lean meats, veggies, fruits, so on and so forth, but still allowing yourself to cheat when you need to. I truly believe that dieting should never be in exchange for your sanity, and thankfully with counting macros, it doesn't have to be. Now counting your macros will ensure that you're ending up in a caloric surplus or deficit for the day. So if you're trying to lose weight or fat or just get toned, get shredded, whatever, you're gonna be in a caloric deficit. If you're trying to gain weight, gain muscle, bulk up, whatever, you're gonna be in a caloric surplus. Whatever your goal is, your macros should be geared towards this. Now I assign macros to all the clients who follow my guide, The Truth About Fitness, and who hire me as their one-on-one -on -one fitness coach, both of which you can find details for in the link below. That being said, there are a few generic calculators online that will help you get a general idea of what your macros should be. Now your personal macros depend on a variety of different factors, your age, height, weight, sex, daily activity levels, and of course, your fitness goals. This truly is a solution to the one size fits all diet plans because not everybody can follow the same diet and expect the same results if they have completely different bodies. Makes sense, right? All right, so step one of counting your macros is to look at the nutrition facts. For this example, I'm gonna be using Trader Joe's mixed nut butter with this Gala apple. Now, while the food tracking app and the food scale are gonna do most of the work for you, you should familiarize yourself with the nutrition label just to see what the macros are like in the foods that you're eating on a day-to-day -day basis. If you can't find the nutrition facts for something such as a fruit or vegetable, you can either look it up online or the food tracking app will have it as well. Now, step two is to get out your food scale. You can find a food scale for $20 to $30 at a Walmart or a Target, or you can go online to Amazon and find a few really good ones for $10 to $15. So before you measure anything out, you wanna make sure that the scale is zeroed out. So to zero out my scale, I simply turn it on, or if I'm using something like a bowl or a plate, I would put that on the scale before I turn it on, and then it would be zeroed out. Essentially, just make sure that the weight is zero before you start. Most food scales have the option to switch between grams or ounces. You'll decide which one to use depending on how it's measured out on your serving size. For this example, I'm gonna be measuring it out in grams. Next is to weigh out your food. The biggest pro about using a food scale is you can see how big a serving size actually is for the food you're about to eat. And the last step is to plug it into your food tracking app. I personally use MyFitnessPal because I think it has the biggest bank of food of all the tracking apps. It's important to pay attention to the nutrition facts of the food entry that you select. A lot of the times these are user inputted entries so it's very important to get the correct information in there as it could potentially throw your diet way off if you enter something wrong. To input a food entry, simply click the plus sign, go to food, search for the food that you're eating, click it, and then enter in how big your serving size is. A trick that I like to use is setting the serving size to one gram, and then however many grams my measurement comes out to be, making that the number of servings on the app. So for this example, I have 43 grams of the nut butter. So I'll go in and set the serving size to one gram and I'll select 43 servings. Next, I'll measure out the apple, which comes out to be 208 grams. So I'll do the same thing for the apple. I'll go in, for serving size, I'm gonna select one gram and for number of servings, I'm gonna select 208. So total macros for this snack comes out to seven grams of protein, 39 grams of carbs, and 24 grams of fat for a grand total of 363 calories. And step four is to consistently hit your macros. On a day-to-day -day basis, you should be revolving the foods that you eat around your macros. So for example, if someone's macros are 100 grams of protein, 100 grams of carbs, and 35 grams of fat, they would eat until they hit each of those. So if someone was eating a lot of protein early on in the day and they hit 100 grams of protein by three o'clock, they would only eat carbs and fat to try and hit those two macros. Once they hit 100 grams of carbs, they would stop eating carbs. Once they hit 35 grams of fat, they would stop eating fat. Now it's okay if you end up slightly above or below your macros on any given day, just as long as you're not way far off. 
I'd say about five grams over or under each macro is all right. Now, whatever you're trying to do, such as lose fat, maintain body weight, or gain muscle, if you consistently hit your macros on a day-to-day -day basis, you will accomplish your goals. And that's it, that's how you count your macros. Now, let me tell you why counting your macros is very important. Say you're following just a generic meal plan. Let's go with clean eating. On that meal plan, for breakfast, it has you eating eggs, oatmeal, and bananas. Now, with no serving size specified, this is trouble. Just a handful of oats can make a difference of 100 calories. Depending on the size of a banana, it could be anywhere from 100 to 250 calories. So you could be eating way more or way less than you're actually supposed to be. Or take low carb for example. If you're not eating any carbs throughout the day, and you're not the type to eat a lot of protein, you could be eating so little calories that some would consider it reckless and dangerous for your metabolism. For example, if I only eat 100 grams of protein, that's 400 calories, and then 50 grams of fat, which is 450 calories, that's only 850 calories in a day. If I'm burning over 2,000 calories, say 22, 2300, this caloric deficit is way too big. And while I may experience quick fat loss or weight loss, in the end, it's gonna do a number on my metabolism and I'm gonna turn my body into a fat generating machine when I do reintroduce carbs into my diet. So no matter what type of diet you're following, clean eating, low carb, low fat, vegan, you should be counting your macros so that you know where you're at. I've seen people overeat on a clean eating diet and I've seen people under eat on a junk diet. Count your macros. Now let me give you a quick visual for how important it is to count your macros. So let's go back to the clean eating example. Say for a snack you're supposed to eat a protein shake and almond. Simple enough and most of us would call this a healthy snack. However, if you're snacking like I do, you might have a tendency to be a little bit mindless and eat more than you think. This example is specifically scary because on the left, there's 170 calories worth of almonds. On the right, there's over 500 calories. Now, if you accidentally eat almost 400 calories more than you were supposed to eat, I can promise you that you're not gonna hit your goals anytime soon. One last point that I wanna make is that you should track everything that you drink as well. Just one of these Gatorades contains 240 calories in it, and most of these calories are coming from sugar. Other beverages such as sodas and alcoholic drinks can range from 150 to 300 calories as well. Now I'm not saying don't have these things, I'm saying if you do, make sure to track them because they're absolutely significant enough to make an impact on your diet. Now for other free tools regarding fitness, be sure to check out the rest of my YouTube channel. You'll find plenty of instructional workout videos, how-to videos, and also, if you or anybody else you know has any sort of fitness related goal, I would love to help in any way possible, whether that be through pointing you in the direction of my guide the truth about fitness, or working with you one-on-one -on -one through my coaching program both of which you can find details for at my website and the link below. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you later.